हरि ओ गणपति हवामहे कविंकवीनापमश्रभस्तम ज्येष्ठराज ब्रह्मण ब्रह्मणस्पत आन शुण्वन्नोतिद साधन महागणपत नम प्रणो देवी सरस्वती बाजेर्वाजिनी वती धीनाम विद्रवतु आनो दिवो बृहत पर्वता सरस्वती यजता गंतु यज्ञ्य नम ओ भद्रम कर्णे शृणुयाम देवा भद्रम पश्येमाजत्रा स्थिरंग सुष्टुवागुंसस्तनूबि यशेम देवित यदायु स्वस्ति न इंद्रो वृद्धश्रवा स्वस्ति न पूषा विश्वेदा स्वस्ति नक्षो अरिष्टने स्वस्ति नो बृहस्पतिर्दा ओ शातिशातिशा हरि ओ सहना सहनौ भुन सह वीकवाहै तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तुमा वह ओ शातिशातिशा हरि ओ स्थापकाय च धर्म सेधर्मस्वे अवतार वरिष्ठाय रामकृष्णाय ते नम ड्यूरिंग दि स्टडी ऑफ मांडुक्य उपनिषद वी हेव टू चैंट दिस वन ऑफ द वेदिक मंत्रास भद्रंकर्णे विश्रुण याम देवा दट्स वाई इन ऑल द क्लासेस आई एम चैंटिंग that particular verse since they prescribe that this mantra is to be chanted so i am going to tell you the simple meaning of this vedic verse why you will get the reason why we chant it om bhadram karne bhishrunu yama bihi karne bihi shrunu yama devaha karna karna means ears bhadram only good things all the good things from all the directions let us hear only good things oh gods this is a prayer to the gods may our ears bhadram karne bihi shunuyama may our ears hear and bhadram pashye may our oh gods may our eyes see only what is auspicious and beneficial may we worship the almighty with our steadfast sorry steadied limbs and minds through sacrifices scrupulously performed as long as we live may indra the chief of gods grant us divinity may the omniscient pushan the nourisher of the universe give us strength may arksha the destroyer of all evils save us from all evil tendencies and may brihaspati the divine perceptor grant us the knowledge of brahman may all round peace physical mental and spiritual be on us forever so that is the simple meaning of that veda mantra bhadram karne bhishrunu yama devaha so since that is prescribed that we should chant that before this mandukya upanishad so i gave you the meaning of it so welcome to the study of mandukya upanishad with the karika of gaudapada acharya so we had come to the seventh verse we had just chanted the seventh verse and i had given you the simple meaning now again before commencing we will chant the seventh mantra of the mandukya upanishad and i will give you the simple meaning and then we will go forward to see the wonderful important aspect of this mandukya upanishad where we will be knowing about our true self 
in greater details. Nantaha pragnam, na bahish pragnam, no bhaya, no bhayataha pragnam, na pragnana ghanam, na pragnanam, na pragnanam, adrishtam, avyavaharyam, agrahyam, alakshanam, achintyam, avyapadeshyam, Ekatma Pratyayasaram Prapanchopash Prapanchopashamanam Shantam Shivam Advaitam Chaturtham Manyante Sa Atma Sa Vigneyaha. So this is the mantra, seventh mantra of the Mandukya Upanishad. So the simple meaning is our Atman, our true self. Us also, everybody of us. That is called by the name Turiya. They consider the Turiya to be that which is not outward consciousness. So the first state, what was that first state? The Jagrat, waking. Now we are in this waking state. So that is outward consciousness. So this Atman, our true nature, they consider this Turiya or Atman that which is not the outward consciousness and for that they told na anta pragnam na bahish pragnam bahish pragnam means outward conscious anta pragnam means inward consciousness when do we have the inward consciousness when we are in the dream state swapna so our true Atman is neither outward consciousness nor inward consciousness, then no ubhaya pragnam, pragna. Ubhaya means in any of the direction, both. Not that, not these two. So, not the inward consciousness, not the consciousness turned both sides. Both sides. Then, in the third thing, in the Mandukya Karika, we saw that the Atman or the pragna was called as pragnana ghana, mass of consciousness. But here they are refusing or they are dissociating or they are refuting that also, not a mass of consciousness. Your true nature is not a mass of consciousness. Then we told that Ishvara is all-knowing, omniscient. So this is not the all-knowing consciousness. Then Neither it is unconsciousness. Beyond perception. You are, see now, we see directly, we perceive everything through the eyes, we see, with the nose, we smell, with the skin, we sense, with the tongue, we taste, with the ears, we hear. So nothing can perceive this Atman. It cannot be touched by any of the senses, nor even by the mind or anything. So it is beyond perception, beyond transaction. It cannot be available for any transaction. Beyond grasp, beyond inference, anumana, beyond thoughts, beyond description, then how can we trace it? Traceable through the unbroken self-awareness, free from the world, tranquil, without any disturbance. Tranquil means no disturbance. Auspicious, shivam, Shiva means auspicious and non-dual Advaitam. It is Atman, your Atman. These are the nature of your Atman. So for you, for meditation, this thing will be wonderful. You can know the meaning and while sitting for the meditation on your own Atman or your own self or God, the true God, the highest God, Parabrahman, then this verse, if you chant that word by word, if you know the meaning, then your mind will dissociate from everything and merge. So that's why this is very, very important verse because of that. So tranquil, auspicious, shivam, non dual advaitam, it is atman, it is to be known, sabigneyaha, it is to be known. This is mantra. Sorry. So we'll now go into the deeper aspect of this wonderful mantra. So now we saw 
in the Mandukya Upanishad, in the first mantra, we were introduced to the Omkara analysis. In the second mantra, to the Atman analysis, self-inquiry. Now, the Upanishad introduced also our Atman associated with three different states. So, that is three quarters and one more quarter of the four quarters. So, it, it introduced the Atman with four quarters. The first three quarters, what are they? Now, we, we are in, what is that? Jagrat, awakened state. Then dream state, Swapna. Then Sushupti, deep sleep state. These three quarters were explained in the next mantras. So, what are they? The third mantra, we saw the description of the first quarter. That is the waking state, Jagrat. It was discussed that whenever Atman is associated with the body, physical body in the waking state, it's called Vishwa. When our own Atman is associated with the outside Jagras physical world, it is called Virat. Then in the fourth mantra, it introduced us to the second quarter, where when our Atman, our true nature is associated, identified with the dream state. In the dream state, when associated with the dreamer's body, then the Atman, my true nature, gets the name Taijasa. When the same Atman is associated with the dreamer's world, universe, it gets the name Hiranyagarbha. Then our own Atman, when associated with the deep sleep state, that is Sushupti. So, in the mantra of the Mandukya Upanishad 5 and 6, the third quarter was introduced to us. We studied that in detail. There, when my Atman, my true nature, pure consciousness is associated, it's not only mine, yours also. It's associated or identified with the potential or causal body in the deep sleep state. My Atman gets the name Pragna. When the same Atman in the same state, that is the Sushupti, deep sleep, is associated with the potential world, universe, which is in the causal state, seed state, the universe, then it is called Ishvara. So these are all the three quarters we saw. So that third quarter was described in detail in fifth and the sixth mantra. So there we studied about our own true nature, Pragna and Ishwara. Now in each of the mantra, in all the mantras, Upanishad pointed out that each of the quarter is the name for my own Atman, your own self. Until you are there, then all gets this identification and life. If you are not there, then there is no life at all. They don't exist. Only if you are there, not you, the ego, the bundle of character, your vasanas and mind and body. No. True nature, that is the Atman. So when that was associated, then all these got the life. When that would not be associated, no life. They are dead. So that is very, very important. So Upanishads pointed out that this aspect is to be noted. It is not for some mark's sake we are studying here. Just like in the, for the examination we studied two question marks, four question marks, ten question marks. No. We are studying it for practical purpose by which studying this and meditating on this we can solve all the problems of our life. We can be free of all the pain. So that is why we are studying this, the real examination, life examination. So it is not for just Mark's sake or just after reading it, throw it away. No. We are analyzing it, going deeper and deeper, understanding it. 
making that knowledge our own, bringing that into our life. So that's why you should be very aware, careful. So Upanishad pointed out that each quarter is the name of your Atman, the consciousness principle. I am that, you are that. I am called Vishwa when associated with the waking state and waking body. My own Atman is called as Virat when associated in the waking state with the waking universe, physical universe. My own Atman, the conscious principle is called the Taijasa when associated with the dream state and also identified with the dream body. I myself, my Atman was called the Hiranyagarbha in the dream state and associated with the dream universe. I myself, so this is not something to be, you will not get bored or anything because you should feel happy here. Why? You should be feeling the joy. You are dissociating with all these things and identifying with the Atman, your own true nature, which is infinite bliss. You are identifying now with infinite consciousness, infinite existence, infinite knowledge, infinite being, infinite joy, absolute. So you feel that joy when you associate with the true nature. So we are separating, cutting off all the other identities. So you will be feeling that joy when you are cutting off all the bondages, binding you. So it is pure joy, you see. So you yourself, your Atman is called Pragna when associated with the deep sleep state, Sushupti, with the potential body or the causal body. Then you are called Pragna. The same Atman, when associated with the potential universe in the deep sleep state, you yourself are called Ishvara. Not the body, mind, ego, but your true nature. So Upanishad pointed out that. So slowly we are studying the detail about this unreal world, all in all its aspect, past, present, future, dream state, waking state and deep sleep state and in the dreamer's body and the world, or not only dreamer's, all, all the different bodies and the different universes. So we are cutting everything, analyzing, just like when you do the dissection in the medical science. So dissecting it. So you are going to your true nature. So what is to be concluded here? What is Upanishad pointing out? It is my threefold association that makes this universe. Otherwise, no universe. Nothing. No world at all. It's your threefold association that is making you or giving the name Vishwa, Taijasa, Pragna, that is the body, associated with the body. When the world, external world, internal world and the causal world, the same, your association is giving given the name Virat, Hiranyagarbha and Ishvara. First it should be noted that now we are coming to a very important state that is Turiya, the true, the real state. But you can't call it a state. Just for the sake of transaction, we should call it a state. Otherwise, it is not a state. Turiya is not a state. It is Turiya or Turiyam, that's all. It is not called Turiya Avastha. Because that is your true nature. The other thing are the, all the state because they are temporary. They are not eternal. They are name and form. So you, can't, you can call them states. But then what is Turiya? So now you will come to know the difference. Please note the difference. When your Atman is associated with all the three states, all the three bodies, all the three universes in three different states, past, present and future, then you get all those different names. And what is Turiya? What is your true nature? 
when you dissociate when you disassociate from all these states you are called atman or turiya so turiya is not associated with any of these three states it is the dissociation from the all previous states that is the reality that's why you can't give the name as the fourth state because it's a dissociation from all the three states then can we name name it as uh, some fourth state no because that is the reality it's not a state that's your true the trait true nature that is the only reality when that is the only reality how can you call it fourth state so that is turiya atma parabrahma what is then that turiya turiya is not associated with with all these states three states but dissociation from the all previous three states pure consciousness the pure i your true nature i my atman dissociated from all these three states three bodies three worlds and the things obtaining there that the three bodies and the three universes that is turiyam now the question comes how can i dissociate myself from these three states we are always in one of the states in one associated with any of the state either the body or the world okay when we go to meditation is it are we now completely dissociating ourselves when we are in samadhi deep concentration on the atman or paramatma are we in that high meditation are we in samadhi no are we dissociated now in samadhi yes you may be dissociated but when you come back to normalcy from that samadhi state again all these three worlds will be waiting for you and it will surround you so now here the question is you should note that once you give up your body this body once you give up your subtle body when you once you give up your causal body everything then you merge you are one with your true nature but our question is our search is not to not only to get that merging or becoming one with the turiyam we are already one with the turiyam after giving up the body but we want it now presently in this world when we are living in this world many times in my lecture i give the example that in one of the cape town garages garage means here petrol bunk in india garage means something else so here for petrol bunk or fuel fuel bunk it's called as garage so they many people would come there there would be a board many good sayings were written one of the sayings one day was you know in the abrahamic religions when they die they put the mark on the grave as rip rest in peace so the question underneath that rip was why do you want to rest in peace after death why can't you live in peace so now all this philosophy all this mandukya upanishad all this advaita how can we make it practical now i want that dissociation now in this life in this very life not after death after death okay so for example you cannot go to swarga or heaven with this body physical body there you will be given separate body to go and enjoy that you can't go with this physical body you have to cast it off then even vaikuntha even brahma loka or any other loka you can't go with your body there is only one loka where you can go with this body that is kailasa 
Kailasa Parvata only. Kailasa, where Shiva lives, that is the only place you can go with this body. So likewise, here, while I live, not somewhere after death or some other time, in other loka. Here, when I live in this world, Jivan Mukti it is called. Liberated while living. Can I be dissociated from all these three worlds and be one with the Brahman? Is it possible in meditation? Is it possible in Samadhi? After giving up the body, yes it is. But now I want, we are, we are very practical. Our Rishis and Munis and our Vedanta and Hinduism, we are very practical. Now we should get liberation. How can I practice all these things now? That is very important. How do I dissociate myself practically? We have got the intellectual knowledge now. That is called dissociation. We can. But how? We are always in one of the state. Suppose, is it possible in meditation or in Samadhi? Can we call Samadhi the fourth state? in which I dissociate the, uh, the which in which one is dissociated from all the street, three states. Okay, if you analyze, you can say that even in Samadhi, in which one can withdraw from all the sense organs, mind, and it's a very high state of yoga. So it is only the intellectual analysis. Don't think that is low or something. It's a very high state, Samadhi and meditation. But we should scrutinize everything for the sake of intellectual scrutinization, for the sake of intellectual perfect understanding logically, we are scrutinizing everything. So from that point, though it is your real state, but even then let us intellectually scrutinize it. Can we call Samadhi or higher meditation as the fourth state in which one is dissociated from all the three states. If you carefully analyze, you cannot say that. Even in Samadhi, in which one can withdraw from all sense organs, from the mind and its function, they all, what are that, all the three states, they remain dormant, in dormant condition. They are in the potential condition. They go to the seed form. In Samadhi, all functions stop. They all go into dormant state. And one is in the causal body. Thus, the important thing is physical dissociation from the three states. Is it possible? So that is a question. No, it's not possible. Thus, physical dissociation, experiential dissociation from the three states, from the three bodies and the three universe is not possible. Why? What is consciousness? All pervasive. Is there any place where consciousness doesn't exist? No, everywhere consciousness. Because of its presence only, all these three worlds, past, present, future, and Jagra, Swapna, Sushupti, in the dream state, in the waking state, in your deep sleep state, you get the life, that life is still there because of the association. Without I, nothing cannot. So it cannot be separated from any of one of these conditions. Then the question is, how can I dissociate, it, dissociate myself from the three states? How is it possible? Or is it not possible? Then if it is not possible, then why should I study Mandukya Upanishad? Why, to, why should I study the any of the Upanishads or Vedanta? So then Mandukya Upanishad will not become revel, relevant. So this dissociation has to happen. That is the reason why we are studying and separating all these things. All this hard work we did was and the Rishis did the tapasya and have given the knowledge because yes, we can dissociate 
but it happens in a special way, ingenious way, different way that we have to study. So that is very important now. So give your mind, give all your care, all your mind to what we study now. This is the essence. So let us study now. How can we dissociate? There is a crux. In the mantra 7, in the definition of the Turiya, the highest state or your reality, the Atman, pure consciousness, my association with the three states gives rise to three quarters, Vishwa, Taijasa, Pragna. They are relational statuses. It is not actual. It's relational statuses. Consciousness, that's your true nature from its own standpoint, disassociated from the three states it's called Turiya. It's, it's called the fourth non-relational status. Compared to the other three relational statuses, it is called fourth non-relational status. How consciousness can dissociate from the worlds of the waker, dreamer and the sleeper? Can this consciousness, my true nature, disassociate at all? Is it possible? If it can, how can it? Superficially speaking, consciousness can never physically separate from, superficially I am telling. Superficially speaking, consciousness your real nature can never physically separate itself from the three worlds. Why? Because consciousness being all-pervading, sarvavyapi, can never get away from anything. Now, two unreal things or two finite things, two finite things can have association and dissociation because they are finite. They are small. They come together and you can dissociate it nut and bolt or all that, they are finite. Your consciousness or Paramatman or God is infinite. What is meant by infinity? Everywhere. Suppose you can dissociate it or separate it, that means it becomes finite. How can you dissociate the infinity? What will you, what will you dissociate it from? From the all-pervading entity. So, dissociation from the pure consciousness, Atman, is not possible. Example, space, Akasha, space, cannot dissociate from anything. Can you dissociate anything from the space? So that is the original matter. So, likewise, consciousness cannot physically, physically, the terms are to be careful, superficial, physically dissociate from or experientially dissociate from any object. Can consciousness see that from the term experience, the experiential. So can consciousness experientially dissociate from the external world? Superficially speaking, consciousness can experientially dissociate just like we experience in the deep sleep state. I, I'm completely cut off from the dream state and the waking state, isn't it? In the waking state, I'm completely cut off from the Deep sleep state and the dream state. In deep sleep state, we are withdrawn from the external world, our body, mind and thoughts. So in the deep sleep state, we are able to experientially dissociate from those states. So similarly, likewise, in Nirvikalpa Samadhi, when you go to that high state of Nirvikalpa Samadhi, what is that Nirvikalpa? Vikalpa means you have the difference of Subject-object relationship is there. But nirvikalpa means no subject, no object. It becomes one. So in nirvikalpa samadhi, a meditator disassociates from the world and thoughts. But now there are two problems. See, we have to scrutinize it properly. Two problems. Even though I experientially dissociate, it's not actually dissociation because everything is potentially present. The moment you come out of the Samadhi, so you see the world. So it is not actual dissociation because everything is potentially present. 
actually it only appears to be dissociation because the body mind etc are in the potential form and so this dissociation is only temporary in both the cases which both the cases deep sleep also only the difference is in deep sleep you are having only reflected consciousness reflected enjoyment but in samadhi it is direct you are having the direct joy it is not reflected nirvikalpa samadhi then what is the difference between nirvikalpa samadhi and sushupti deep sleep state then it looks as if it is very same no there is difference what is that one of our great sadhus swami itishwarananda ji maharaj used to tell a person going into deep sleep state every day we all go will come back whatever he was suppose if i am a fool i'll go into that deep sleep state i'll come out as a fool as it as i am a fool here means ignorant person but if i go as a fool or an ignorant person with a gnana into samadhi then when i come back i come out as a man of wisdom gnani then i become a gnani a man of wisdom a man of realization then all these three states all the three worlds everything will be there in the potential form it appears now in the waking state you will have all the problems everything but they can't bind you earlier after coming from sushupti they could have bound you put you into difficulty stress everything but now after samadhi they cannot bind you how will they be the world is still there it is just like the burnt rope earlier the rope could bind you but once the rope is burnt then it is just the shape of the rope it cannot burn you it is just like that so now going to samadhi and coming down is a very very higher state after much now how now i have to get dissociated is there any way practically can i do that in my day to day life can i do that that's why it's so practical now our upanishad will take you to that gaudapada acharya will take you to that can consciousness dissociate from the world to become turiya it is not physically or experientially possible but how then vedanta gives a very ingenious and very special method very very important what is that method this is the trick by you can, you can so even while living here you can dissociate from all the three worlds so very nice beautiful technique is given here so carefully listen vedanta says that it is possible in a some other way in a special way the gnani the man of realization is accomplishing that after he goes to samadhi alone by separating himself from the world in an ingenious way that method is pure knowledge pure understanding dissociation can be brought about through sheer understanding sheer understanding what type of understanding is it the understanding that i am the observer i am the observer i am the witness i am the eternal witness sakshi bhuta i am the observer and the world all the other worlds past present future jagrat swapna sushupti and in that the body and the universes whatever all varieties you saw here you should just be an observer a witness and the world all that is observed so in mandukya upanishad the observer and the observed are given very special status the observer and the observed the witness and the witnessy what you are going to witness i the pure consciousness my real nature the observer am the reality satyam 
and everything that is observed or witnessed or experienced namely the bodies different bodies in different worlds in the past present and future and the universes or the world in the three states in the past present and the future everything that is observed experienced in all the three states are mithya untrue i the consciousness am satyam and that which is experienced in the form of body mind ego and the world are mithya untrue can satya and mithya untrue and the true get associated is it possible no it can never can light and darkness coexist never can heat and cold coexist it can never just like if you tell i want hot ice cream it is like that contradictory in terms they call in english language as oxymoron the best of the oxymoron is they were happily married very rarely that happens so oxymoron so these things opposing things cannot exist together light and darkness heat and cold contradictory in terms so satya and mithya the truth and the untruth can they coexist mithya can never touch the satya even though the mithya or agnana may be sitting on that or covering that so now we are covered our true nature is covered by this agnana but it cannot touch it can the sword cut the space can the water drench the space can the fire burn the space if these three things cannot do the sword or any weapon cannot burn even the ordinary matter called space then can it touch your atman your true nature which is consciousness which is above beyond all this even beyond greater than akasha space if it cannot touch even akasha can it touch the real atman so mithya cannot touch the satya once you understand that association of satya and mithya through the maya is seeming is superfluous and not factual then it becomes clear that i my true nature the pure consciousness the turiya i am only seemingly vishwa seemingly taijasa i am seemingly pragna i am seemingly called virat hiranyagarbha and ishvara but not associated with any of these quarters after getting this knowledge understanding i know that i have always been turiyam and turiya only pure consciousness and atman only but was only playing the roles just like in the drama you are the owner of the company now you will play different roles sometimes you will play the role of a beggar sometimes you the owner of the company will be playing the role of a middle class person sometimes you will be playing the role of an emperor or a king just like pragna taijasa and vishwa or just like the virat then ishvara and hiranyagarbha so you are putting on different roles that's all the atman putting different roles but have you been touched by that the moment you shake off those cloths the moment you remove the cover of the beggar you are the owner you are the lord likewise the paramatman or parabrahman or the turiya and seemingly associate putting all these roles you are only seemingly vishwa tejas and pragna and all other things 
but not really associated with all those quarters or states after this knowledge after this understanding i come to know definitely that i have been only turiyam and pure consciousness only playing the roles of the bigger the king the middle class man even while playing the role the owner of the company while even he will is playing the drama of the beggar he knows that he is the owner of the company is not a beggar it's just like that that is witness that is the understanding it is just like that even while playing the role i am turiyam i know i am the lord so even while you are in the world serving your children serving your parents serving your wife serving your husband doing the work under the boss everything you should know that is only the drama you are playing but you are really tuya the parabrahman the atman this knowledge now see you will be a witness you will not be touched by anything the boss insult will not touch you the scolding of the father and the mother will not hurt you nothing can touch you then so that is the practical thing which you can get here you can use it practically you can be dissociated you will be working you will be doing all the work you will be serving everything you are earning money you can be a king on the throne you may be on the battlefield like a soldier do whatever you want be as you are but you know you are the witness you are the turiyam you are the reality the parabrahman the atman the true nature pure consciousness after you get this knowledge you have this understanding i know that i have been always turiyam i am turiyam i will be turiyam but only i'll be playing these roles different roles of the drama like vishwatai jasa pragna virat hiranigarbha only at that level at ordinary level you will have ego everything pride that you are you are a great vehicle great dresses everything to be normal but within you are a witness how have you seen the coconut when the coconut is still raw tender you cannot separate the kernel the water and the outer portion that shell they are sticking together but when you dry it when the water inside is dried and still you dry it in the sunlight then if you shake that coconut dried coconut you can see inside it makes the sound lata 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 sound will be there because it is separated then you can make use of that nicely you can break it open and it is separate but when it is raw if you break it open it will still difficult to remove it from so the heat of the sun separates it likewise the light of the knowledge the understanding of the knowledge the heat of the knowledge will separate us from this real and the unreal and then that with that understanding you can be always dissociated even though you are in the middle of the world externally you will be like normally like everyone but internally you are a witness you are a sakshi you are the experience the eternal witness so after that knowledge i know that i am always been turiya but only the playing the roles of vishwa tejas apragna even while playing the role i am turiyam i am pure consciousness because the role never touches me at any time will that in the drama the role of the beggar or a thief or a drunkard touch you not at all you know that you are not a drunkard you are not a beggar you are not a thief or only the playing the role in the drama likewise here to in this world you are only playing the role as a husband wife child or any other thing for that sake butcher a soldier whatever but in reality you know you are a witness you are the turiyam because the role never touches me at any time you know 
Adi Shankaracharya had four disciples. One of them was Sureshwara Acharya. He was from Bihar. He was the husband of Ubaya Bharati. He was the disciple of Kumarila Bhatta. So, Shankaraj, he became the disciple of Shankaracharya and he took up sannyasa. Then he became Swami Sureshwara Acharya. He was made the head of the first head of Shringeri Ashrama in Karnataka. Shringeri. So that Sureshwara Acharya, the second Shankara of that mat, that Sureshwara Acharya, the disciple of Adi Shankara, he gives an example in Naishkarmya Siddhi. One of the terms in Advaita Vedanta, Naishkarmya Siddhi. So he gives the example to illustrate this point which we are now discussing, how to be the witness. How are we not touched by this word? So he gives a beautiful example. This example will solve many problems. It's a very beautiful example. You will enjoy it, you see. Now imagine, all of you have seen the glass tumbler. It's a pure, sparkling, spotless glass tumbler. You pour water it into it. Glass, it is glass tumbler. You pour water into it transparent glass bowl. Okay? You take a straight rod, whatever it might be, rod of glass or rod of iron or anything, a rod, and place it into that bowl of water. The rod is very straight. Pakka, straight. There is a straight rod partially dipped in that water. Not fully, partially dipped. Okay? Now, when that rod comes in association with the water, you know that scientific physics, in physics, you call it as refraction. Due to the refraction, what happens? The rod under the water, not the rod above the water. The rod under the water appears to be bent. Because of refraction, it appears to be bent. Now, how will you straighten the rod? Can you straighten the rod by taking out from the water? No. You need not straighten at all. Why? Actually, the rod need not be straightened because it was never bent. It was never bent. It was looking as if it was bent. So why do you want to straighten it up? So likewise, you are never bound. You are always liberated. You are the Atma Swarupa. You are never touched by this world. It looks as if you are attached. It looks as if you are in pain. But in reality, you are that pure nature. You are a witness. You are pure Atman. So why do you want to remove the glass rod and tell that it is straightened? It never got bent. It is only looking as if it is bent. Likewise, when your Atman is associated with all these things, it looks as if it is attached. As if you are in pain, as if you are in depression, as if you are in trouble, insulted, as if it is all as ifs. In reality, you are not attached at all. You are not having the pain at all. Only when identified with this physical body, you have the disease and other pain. But in reality, you were never associated. You are not the body. You are the reality. You are the Atman. When that rod comes in association with the water, the rod under water appears to be bent. Appears. Again, not those words. Appears. How do you straighten the rod? Where do you want to straighten the rod? Where do you waste, waste your time by straightening the rod? Should I take the, out the rod? Should I kill my body? Should I kill my ego? Where do you want to? You are never associated. You are never bent. The glass rod was never bent. Thus experiencing the bent rod. I can declare that the rod is straight by the knowledge. Because if you have the knowledge of refraction in physics, you can declare. That is the truth. It is not bent. If you have the knowledge of physics of refraction, you know surely that it is not bent. But a person who doesn't have the knowledge, it tells, oh, it has become bent. 
That is what happening when you don't have this knowledge of the Atman, your true nature, the knowledge of Vedanta. You think you are associated and you are this body, mind, complex and ego and the world I'm enjoying, I'm in pain, all these things comes. It is as if actually the rod need not be straightened. Actually, you need not get liberation. You are already liberated. Actually, the rod need not be straightened because it was never bent. That ex that's experiencing the bent rod. I can declare that the rod is straight by the knowledge that the seeming bent is not a real bent. Similarly, consciousness, turiyam, your real nature, all the time. There's no time at all. Where is the time for the Atman? It's present always. So your Atman, your pure nature, the Turiyam, whether it is any state during the three states or past, present or future, all that roles you are playing now in this life or any life as an animal, as a microbe, as a virus, as a dead thing, as the highest human being, as a saint, as the demon, as the ghost, is just appearance. The roles are appearances. So how can you become the Turiyam? You need not become, you are always that. How can I get that knowledge? By understanding that I am always Turiyam. That pure nature. With this knowledge that I am always Turiya. Pure consciousness. Not associated with any of the roles in any of the three states. In any of the three times, past, present and future. I can enjoy playing the roles. Then you can enjoy playing any role. The role of a thief, the role of a butcher, the role of anything. You can enjoy it. Why? You are not associated with that. See see the children. They are not associated with any three. Rajas, Tamas and Sattva. They are so pure. Everything is play for them. They enjoy everything. They go on playing. They will be defeated in the game, but again they are ready to play. Why? They are not associated with success and failure. We, when we become elderly because of our ego, we want success. We want to win. All the pain comes. The sportive spirit is gone. The children are playing. They lose. Every time he loses, but he will go. The next moment he will go to play. Why? They enjoy even failures. They are not attached to anything. Turiya, pure consciousness, your true nature all the time. During all the three states, you are only playing the role in all that you are. Sometimes you are a husband, sometimes you are wife, sometimes you are child, sometimes you are father, sometimes you are mother, sometimes you are the boss, sometimes you are the subordinate, you are the servant. Whatever, play all the roles. It's only appearance. So becoming Turiyam is by understanding, having this knowledge. With the knowledge that I am always Turiyam, not associated with any of these roles I am playing. I can enjoy my play. Whether in pain you can enjoy, whether in pleasure you can enjoy, whether you are a king you can enjoy, whether you are a beggar you can enjoy. Because you are not associated with any of them. It is just drama, the roles you are playing. What is the name? What can we give the name of the Turiya? Not an experience. Uh, witness Sakshi. Sakshi. That's law in few of the meditation. You play that role of witness Sakshi. So, isn't that wonderful? We got so much of wonderful knowledge. So, they still will go deeper and deeper into this. Even to get intellectual knowledge of this is so beautiful. Start practicing it every day, every second. And you will enjoy every role. Whether you are a boss, you are an auditor, you are a sweeper, you are a cook. Whether you are doing the household chore, household work, anything, any role. You are just playing your role. You are the witness, but in reality you are the pure consciousness, infinite. Existence absolute, infinite consciousness absolute, infinite bliss absolute that you are. 
So enjoy every role. Don't associate with them. Always know you are the witness, you are the Paramatma Swarupa, Parabrahma Swarupa. Not this body mind complex. You are not Mr. So and so, Mrs. So and so. All that is your role, that's all. So, what a beautiful thing. See, you are feeling that joy. Always, whenever you get pain, identify I am that bliss, infinite bliss. Where is pain? Okay, we will stop our conversation. Still deeper things are there to enjoy. So, but we have to note it down. All these things is useful for meditation. All the time you should remember this. 24 bar 7, you should be having this knowledge. Then nothing can touch you. Intellectually, see, you are convinced. That wonderful Sureshwara Acharya's example of bent rod. There is no bent at all. It is always straight. You are not attached at all. So enjoy your life with this knowledge. Maybe we can take only two or three classes of this. As of now, maybe we I mean, take that afterwards. But since I am getting transferred from Johannesburg to Durban, so I will be moving maybe in another few more days. So the classes may stop temporarily now. Future I may take up. So whatever, how many ever days I take this knowledge of Mandukya Upanishad, that much if you practice every day, you will enjoy your life. It is game. It will be sport. Like children, no attachment. Witness, you are Atma Swarupa, pure consciousness, Satchit Ananda Swarupa. So we will stop our conversation here. If you have any questions, if you have any doubts, please ask. No questions on the live chat. So is there any question here? On the Google Live, anybody? Okay. If you don't have any questions, that when we we can conclude with the prayer. Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Tatsat Sri Ramakrishna Panamastu Thank you. Namaste. Om Namo Namo Yanai Yanai Om Namo Narayana Yanai